What's up, YouTube, and what you know, my name is Domino with the Zero, and welcome to another Pokemon Sun and Moon anime review. Today is episode number 45. This episode was a little underwhelming compared to recent episodes, um, but I think that I think this episode, though it was a filler, definitely probably set up for um, episodes to come. So I want to talk through that real quick. Uh, as always, let me know what your favorite part of this episode was in the comments below. And uh, let's go ahead and begin our review. So the episode starts off with Lily journaling about Nebby and her mother, basically recapping everything that happened in the last episode. And the last episode was really cool because we just met Cosmog, we just met Lily, or we just, what? We just met Cosmog and Lily's mom. Uh, and then Lily says that she's concerned. Um, from there, we see Ash's Pokemon eating. Um, and there's some interesting points that happen here. The first thing was that Litten and Lycanroc um, seem to be competing with each other, or more, Litten is competing up to Lycanroc. So, um, you know, seeing that Lycanroc is bigger and stronger, so Litten wants to be more like that. Um, from there, a funny little scene happens where Cosmog's walking around looking at the group who's eating, and uh, um, Rowlet doesn't want Cosmog to watch it eat. So Rowlet starts going around its, uh, around its little food dish, and Cosmog follows around, and they die, they try to, Rowlet's trying to dodge Cosmog and winds up getting dizzy. It's a pretty funny little scene. Um, and then Cosmog does the same thing to Pikachu, uh, but tickles his nose and makes Pikachu sneeze out all of his food. That's a little intro. The episode is titled Nebby Panic Sudden Transportation. <clears throat> um, the episode, Team Rocket's pretty big in this episode, and at the beginning of the episode shows that they're talking to who I'm guessing is a leader. It was very uh, ambiguous who they were talking to, but um, they talked about how they needed to get money for themselves so they could make it on their own in Alola. Um, and then Ash and Nebby and Pikachu all run up to purchase their donuts. Uh, and of course, Kukui comes by and says that they shouldn't do that and they go off. Um, so that's the first time that Team Rocket has ever seen Nebby. And um, James comes up with this brilliant idea that because of its small purple and gassy figure, that Nebby must be the pre-evolution of coughing. Of coughing. So obviously James is interested because we know he used to have a coughing. Uh, but that's a very interesting interpretation and I don't think they ever get it right during the episode. So at school for the day, the whole group is making, um, making their partner Pokemon out of little clay figures. Lily and Kiawe are the only ones that are anywhere close. Ash even winds up making Mimikyu somehow while going for Pikachu. <clears throat> and this is where Cosmog starts going around and transporting the whole group. So he transports off every single person. Uh, he teleports Sophocles off to where Jigglypuff is, uh, Mallow to Oranguru's place, Lana into the ocean, and Kiawe into nearly into a volcano. And Rotom Dex explains, that, explains to the group that it's using teleport. Um, so Cosmog walks, or yeah, what? I I don't know what my typing is, but Nebby walks up to Lily and touches her as if to teleport her. Um, but of course, Lily freaks out, and Nebby falls asleep. The connections between Lily and and Nebby, they're not trying to hide anything. Um, but while the whole group is having their lunch break, Lily points out that the group was teleported where they were, where their thoughts were. Um, so apparently Nebby is reading everyone's thoughts and then teleporting them to where they are. Um, Nebby wakes up with an annoying supersonic. I'm sure that this is going to be something that we see often, but oh my gosh, it's so annoying. Uh, <clears throat> and as the group goes around and tries to calm Nebby, nobody can do it. We saw this in the last episode until Lily comes and makes some, some face. It, the, the camera doesn't even show the face. The camera's like back here. So it just shows the back of Lily's head, and the whole gang like gets really shocked. But then, Nebby starts laughing. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. But again, they're just trying to layer on this Lily and Nebby connection. At this point, Nebby starts teleporting Ash around to everywhere that the entire group was. Like he goes to every single point that everybody else was. Eventually, landing um, where Team Rocket is at the beach. Uh, and they're trying to, um, they're scheming on how they're going to get the petite coughing, the small coughing. And it, anyway, um, and of course the gang goes on to fight. So Je uh, Jesse sends out Mimikyu, and then James comes up with this idea 
that, oh, we're gonna stand on the sideline so that we don't get in the way of your one-on-one -on -one battle, make sure to fight fair. So uh, Pikachu and Mimikyu face off and we know how strong Mimikyu is. Um, so they start doing this thing where like they start off here and Jesse starts walking around so that eventually they're facing this way and the sun is like right here. So it winds up blinding Ash and Pikachu for a second and Meowth grabs Cosmo. How many years have we been fighting Team Rocket to know that this isn't going to work? Now at the same time, Mimikyu is probably, actually is definitely their strongest Pokemon ever. So I guess this... Eh, eh, eh. Um, but anyway, so Team Rocket has Nebby and as... Mimikyu goes to attack Pikachu at a disadvantage. Mimikyu's probably going to get a good hit in. Jesse returns Mimikyu and they start celebrating. But then they get on high alert because they're like, this is normally when Beware, uh, when Beware comes and grabs us. And of course, Nebby's sitting there who's also celebrating, celebrating with Team Rocket. Nebby teleports them straight to Beware. Beware picks them up and walks them into their cave. And Nebby is just seen... Uh, Nebby is just seen sitting right outside their cave and getting sad uh, but apparently looks to where to teleport and finds where ash is uh, and nebby winds up teleporting back to ash and that's pretty much it from there the the rest of the gang finds ash and we determine that nebby's getting already getting better at using teleport uh which is cool i wonder so that's pretty much the entire episode like from there the, the episode ends so I wonder if Teleport's going to play more of a role or if it was really just a one episode little deal. Will they randomly teleport to the altar? Because they're not even, they're not close to the altar. They've done no second island, any or th no third island, anything. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, but then in next week's preview, uh, the gang winds up visiting Aether Paradise. So I'm assuming this is so Lily is like visiting her mom or something like that. Um, but the episode is, is going to be focused around Ditto. Ditto's transforming everywhere. Um, and we see Team Rocket working at Aether and they're still pursuing the small coffin, the baby coughing. So that's pretty much it. Again, this episode was, was semi underwhelming and that's why this is by far the shortest anime review that we've done. But um, all in all, we'll st we're still building up to what should be a pretty good uh, little climax of this season, at least. Um, yeah, again, let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments below, and we'll see you next week for episode 46 anime review. Until then, have a blessed day.